Yeah, so welcome to my talk on scheduling optimization in practice. So before I come to the actual topic of this talk, let me shortly introduce the company Avon and myself. So Avon works in the field of software development and services. So in particular, we are developing an automation platform called Xam Control. Avon was founded in 2009 and the headquarters is located in St. Ruprecht an der Raab, which is in the east of Graz. And the number of employees is about 95. About me, I'm a mathematician and software developer at Avon with a strong focus on algorithmic um, and optimization problems. And one of these optimization problems we are working a lot um, is scheduling, so the actual topic of this talk. So in this talk, um, I want to give you a short overview on this topic of scheduling guided by the following three questions. So what is actually scheduling and scheduling optimization? Then also why is scheduling typically a quite hard problem or what makes it um, challenging? And then in the end, I want to focus on um, how we can tackle um, the scheduling problems and find um, still reasonable good solutions or for we will see before that it's um, quite challenging. Well, so what is um, scheduling? So roughly speaking, it's just planning or deciding what to do, when and where under certain constraints. So for example, think about a timetable in school or at university. There you, you have to plan which course um, takes place when, where, and also who is giving the course. Well, and strictly speaking, all of us are doing more or less every day scheduling when we um, come up with our personal schedule. So if we decide when we do the um, shopping, when we go um, to the gym, when we have lunch, all these decisions are more or less um, scheduling, even though you probably um, don't call it scheduling. Well, and of course we want to do um, that in a clever way and we want to maximize some objectives. So um, that's then what we call scheduling optimization. And typically examples of um, our objectives are um, that we want to minimize some costs or the completion time, but also maybe in the example of, of the timetable, we want maybe a balanced workload in the sense that all the teachers are gi giving um, about the same number of courses. Well, so now um, I want to show you a more concrete example, an example um, in manufacturing. So um, assume we have um, various tasks, so four in this case, and this task consists of some um, jobs and all these jobs require some um, machines. So for example, the first task um, requires first for three hours the machine one, then for two hours the machine two, and then for four hours the machine three. Well, and now we want to find a schedule for um, all these tasks. So um, the jobs have to be performed all um, directly after each other. So the schedule maybe looks like that. So we see in this example that maybe we start with the task three on machine um, two. Then after three um, hours, we swap to um, machine one. Then after four hours, we um, currently start with the task um, two and so on and so forth. So we see that um, the task one is um, started quite late and the task four even later. Well, and in total, um, we require 22 hours in this um, schedule. And now, um, if you would like to have a small um, puzzle, just pause the video and um, try to come up with a better um, schedule. So a schedule with an earlier completion time. Well, and if you do so, you will already see that it's not so easy to imp improve this schedule and that it's even harder to come up with the best um, schedule, so the one with the earliest completion at all. Well, and that leads me already to the next um, guiding question, which is why is scheduling typically a quite hard um, problem? So let me first start with some theoretical reasons why um, scheduling is hard or why it seems to be hard. So um, the first one is 
just that the number of possible scatters, so the number of possible solutions, is typically quite large. So, for example, if you have um, 13 tasks, we already have 13 factorial um, many options in our orderings in which we can start the tasks. And that's already a very huge number with 33 um, digits. And even with modern computers, um, it would um, take billions of years to consider all of them. Well, another reason why it's um, quite um, difficult is that the, typically when we scatter one task um, that has a huge impact to all the other tasks. So, for example, think about a train um, schedule. If one train is delayed, that causes typically um, a delay of other trains, which then cause further delays. So just changing the schedule of one task um, can lead to a large um, chain reaction and influence all the other tasks. Well, so while this were, let's say, more to informal reasons why scattering seems to be hard, um, there's also a much more rigorous theory, a mathematical theory, dealing um, with the question how um, hard certain problems are. And this theory tells us the following, that um, most of the scattering pro problems are so-called um, NP-hard. That means that no efficient algorithm is known. So no um, algorithm um, or efficient algorithm solves the, the problem um, in an optimal way, so finds really the best um, solution. Well, so we know that even in theory and um, so in the ideal world, um, scattering is a hard problem. And then on top of that, there are of course also some um, practical reasons which makes it even harder. So, um, to mention a few, um, one is that the, some of the constraints are quite often quite complex or hidden. So, think about our manufacturing example. So, maybe um, the machines um, tend to overheat if we um, use them um, for uh, too long. But maybe that's not known before we start our optimization. Because before we um, optimize, maybe we have only scatters um, which are, let's say, quite bad and where we do not use the machines for a long um, consecutive time. So maybe we do not know that um, the machines tend to overheat. So we know that only after the optimization, which makes it, of course, much more difficult. Well, another point is that, of course, there can be some uncertainties or changes. So maybe a machine breaks down. And of course, we also do not know that beforehand when we already, uh, when we um, schedule our tasks. Well, so that are some reasons why scheduling is um, a hard problem. So you might think now that I can stop and that, yeah, we cannot do um, anything. So it's maybe just too hard. But um, the nice and cool thing is that in practice we can still do something and um, we can still find some reasonable um, solutions. And that's the um, last um, part of, of my um, talk. So how can we do that? So here I want to start, let's say, with the um, typical workflow we use when we um, tackle an, an scheduling problem. So first, um, yeah, we try to gather all the data and information. So we define our problem in a really rigorous um, way. We get all the jobs, the tasks, describe all um, ob objectives we have, all constraints. And in, in practice, that can really um, a lot of, of constraints we can have. Then after that, we try um, to translate this more verbose description of the problem in a mathematical um, model and in mathematical formulas. So we come up with a mathematical model and also define all the data structures and classes we want um, to use. Well, then we are ready to um, design an algorithm. And as I said before, um, finding the best solution is typically um, out of, of range. So that's um, too much to ask. So we need to be satisfied with some approximations. And of course, we try to push our solution as close to the optimum as um, possible. And to find such approximations, we use different uh, um, algorithm techniques and um, 
also some heuristics and in the end I want to show you one example of a heuristic. Well, and then if we have our algorithm, we have our schedule and then we want to evaluate this schedule. We um, yeah, test whether all the constraints are satisfied, so if the schedule is um, feasible and also the, um, how good our schedule is, so the, the performance, so how good are our objectives um, satisfied. Well, and also um, this workflow here is displayed more in a linear way. Um, in, in practice, of course, it's more a cycle, so we repeat all the steps. So maybe after um, the evaluation of the schedule, we go back and um, improve our mathematical model or our algorithm, so it's more um, a cycle. Well, and let me also um, mention that um, in practice, um, people often tend to um, focus too much on, on the third part, so on the algorithmic part. And of course, in, in, from the theoretical point of view, from the mathematical point of view, it's maybe the most challenging um, part. But that often leads that the other steps or the importance of the other steps are underestimated. So in particular, the, the first step, so the problem definition, seems maybe at first glance not to be too difficult. But in practice, that can really be um, quite challenging to just define all the, the constraints and the objectives you have to really um, make them um, precise. Because often the constraints are just decidedly assumed that they are just um, satisfied, but they are nowhere um, written. And so you all have to define all of, of them in a quite rigorous um, way. And of course, the, the problem definition is um, very important because um, yeah, if we are imprecise and maybe define our objectives in an imprecise way, then at the end we might get a schedule which is optimized, but unfortunately um, not for the um, right objectives, so for the un unintended objectives. And even worse, if we um, forget maybe some constraints, then that can lead that our schedule um, in the end does not satisfy this constraint, so we cannot then execute it in, in, in practice when we forget it. Well, so the problem definition is uh, really an a important um, part. Well, and now um, in the end I want to um, show you one example of a heuristic, the so-called greedy heuristic or greedy algorithm. It's um, yeah, an easy example. Of course, in practice we um, use um, or often use um, more sophisticated um, heuristics or um, techniques, but that's, uh, I think, often a, a good start. Um, well, and this um, algorithm is based on one rule, saying that we try to schedule each task as um, early as possible. So if we do that for our manufacturing um, example, we just start with um, the first task, so we schedule that at just at the beginning, then also our second task can be scheduled just at the beginning. Well, then the third task cannot be um, scheduled before 10 um, o'clock because the machines are occupied before. Well, and then also the task four um, can be scheduled like that. And we see now um, that this um, schedule requires 21 hours, so our greedy algorithm improved um, our schedule at least by one um, hour. Well, so as I said, it's a, a nice heuristic and a, of a good starting point, but there's one big weakness of it, and um, that is that um, all four, each of the steps is locally optimal, so we um, schedule each task as early as possible. Nevertheless, the overall schedule may not be optimal. And to see that, um, we just repeat um, the steps with just one minor change. So again, we start with our task one, schedule it as early as possible. And then we change the scheduling of task two um, slightly. So we just delay um, it by one hour. So at first glance, it might seem quite counterintuitive. Why should we wait for one hour? So that just le um, leads that the task two um, is completed one hour later than before. But we gain um, one advantage, namely that um, 
between five and eight o'clock at machine two, there is now a, a larger break. And that one we can use to schedule our task three. So we can then um, schedule our task three much um, earlier. And then also the task four can be um, scheduled much earlier. And suddenly um, we have a schedule that requires only 16 um, hours. So this yeah, counterintuitive um, delay of one hour um, improved the schedule at the end of um, for five hours, which is of course quite a lot. Well, so this example shows us that the yeah, greedy algorithm um, does not give us um, always the optimal solution. And I think it's also a good example of seeing um, how much impact the, the change of just one scattering um, can have. So just ch um, changing the, the, the scattering of task two just for a, um, yeah, just a minor change really leads um, to a big um, change in, in the, in, for the total um, schedule. Well, so um, if you tried the puzzle, I hope um, you also came up with this um, schedule because it's the optimal one, so the best one, um, one can um, get. Well, with that, um, I want to conclude my talk. Thank you very much for your attention.